What's up guys, Chaz here with The Lifestyle Warrior, bringing you another edition of your beginner series, and today we are going to cover the basics of your Amazon Seller app. Just go into whatever application store you have on your phone and just search Amazon Seller app and you're gonna see this main one pop up. I'm gonna show you the basics. You have a few different things on the homepage here. Number one is scan, so you guys can see these little blue dots, those are visual scanners. So for example, if I actually do this live right now, see if this picks it up. I can scan just that and it will pull the image and try to find its best match, which that did awesome. Then I can tap on that, it brings up the listing. So that feature is extremely handy. If you cannot scan the barcode, so let's say you are inside of a thrift store or Goodwill or Walmart, they have a big clearance sticker over the barcode itself, or sometimes you see Goodwill will actually take a pen and mark out that. So you can actually scan by the image itself or the barcode. But scan is your first option. Sell a product is number two. So in here, you can check out just any trending products that are coming on. These are kind of fun just to see if you have any, any ideas that spark of products you wanna to try to sell, you can check out all these different things in here. So aside from checking out the movers and shakers, top sellers, et cetera, you can actually tap right here and this is another area you can search by title. So if your product does not have a barcode for some reason, you can search by title and that will bring up any listings with that title or you can tap on that camera button, top right, and it will bring this back up. If you're in a situation where it's dark, you have your light option. You can see that pop on and off. We're gonna hit cancel. We are going to go back to our homepage. And then from here, number three is ship orders. So if you are doing any type of merchant filled, this is where you would go ahead and tap and you can create your order fulfillment just straight from here. Since all of our stuff is done via FBA, you can see like we just sold these today. We don't need to do anything because Amazon handles all orders and shipping. Next up is pricing opportunities, improve my pricing. You can tap on this and you can compare it to the buy box prices, sales conversion, etc. These are always nice to kind of play around with, see where your pricing is at compared to other people. And you can reply to messages, restock low inventory, manage FBA shipments. We'll show you any current shipments that you've done. So let's get into a couple of the basics. I'm not gonna go through every single tab here because a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory, but the main ones that we mess around with, number one is inventory. So you guys can see right now, as of the time of this recording, we have almost a thousand offers. And in here is your exact inventory. So let's take one of these shoes, for example, Nike Women's Metcon 2s. I'm gonna go into this listing. This is where you can adjust your pricing. So you can see in the middle of the screen there, buy box price will show you what the current buy box is. And it looks like based on our pricing, we probably own that buy box. So if I came in here and I wanted to adjust my pricing, let's say I wanted to come up to $24.99, I can change that there done i'm gonna hit save and now it takes about 15 minutes my pricing will be updated but this gives you all of your basic information on your inventory i'm gonna go ahead and go back and inside of pricing it's the same thing you just saw adjust some of your pricing based on those selling coach i honestly don't mess around with this too much it will give you various types of inventory opportunities product opportunities just kind of recommendations from amazon Product search brings you back to that search page. Um, your history will be shown on here. So if we go into that search history, so you have your favorites tab, you have your history tab. So if you're inside of a store, you scan a bunch of things and then you come back home and you want to go back and look again at a specific thing. Let's say this Logitech C922X. I wanna go back and look at that again. It's gonna show you exactly what you search. So your entire search history will be right there. Communications will be your messaging. So if you do get customer messages, because we are FBA, Amazon handles all customer service. So if you ever do get a message from a customer, just send them a message back no matter what it is and just let them know because your item was fulfilled by Amazon, you can go ahead and reach out via their customer service and they can take care of you. That's one of the things we're paying these fees for. So Amazon handles all of that. So the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. You have your help section, contact seller support, et cetera. So a lot of people don't understand that you can actually go into your app, hit contact seller support, and you can go through and send them an email. 
or whatever you need to get done there. So let's go back and there are two things I want to show you that a lot of people miss out on. So let's go back to one of these listings. You see where low price of 899 is and you see where 437 is taken out underneath that it says fees with FBA. If you do not have this set to FBA and you're stuck on merchant, you're not going to see the true FBA fees. So this is where a lot of new people get lost. They don't have their settings set up the right way. So I'm gonna show you exactly how this is done. Go to your menu bar, top right, hit the little gear. You can follow along right now if you're watching this video. Inside of here, you are going to go to product search. So when you come into this, it's very common that your default channel is going to be set to seller fulfilled, which you see right here. You wanna hit Amazon fulfilled. This is gonna change your fees because seller fulfilled are less fees than Amazon because you are taking care of the shipping. Make sure this is on Amazon fulfilled so you see the proper FBA fees. Now, if we scroll down, there's one other tip I wanna give you. This is something a lot of people miss and I'll show you exactly how to use this. So you see shipping to customer. This we do not need to worry about because we are not merchant filling. If you are merchant filling and that's something you wanna do, you need to make sure you put in whatever your estimated cost to the customer is going to be so it pops up in your fees. We, on the other hand, are shipping to the Amazon warehouse, so we are just gonna worry about that tab. You can see I have 60 cents per pound is my estimate. That is a very safe ballpark number. You are actually gonna be surprised the more you send in the larger shipments, you can actually get this down below 30 cents per pound. But 60 cents per pound is gonna give us a pretty safe ballpark number. So once you have your shipping cost to Amazon plus your Amazon fulfilled channel marked, those automatically update. So we are actually going to go back and I wanna show you what I mean by that shipping cost. So I'm gonna go back to this webcam, for example. Now, we are looking at a buy box price of $94.49. After fees, which are $10.58, I'm going to be left with $83.91 as my gross proceeds. And remember, like we talked about in the ROI versus profit video, gross means this is what we see before our shipping cost is taken out and before our buy cost is taken out. Now this is where most people stop. They look and say, oh, I can make $83 on this product. But what they don't know is this does not show your shipping. You actually have to tap where it says gross proceeds and you see the arrow on the right? Tap on that area. Now under that third tab where it says shipping to Amazon based on our 60 cents per pound, it's gonna cost 43 cents to ship in. So now I'm actually going to see about $83.48. This is a very lightweight item, so it's only 43 cents. But if you start to scan bigger items and you are only looking at the gross proceeds and not the actual shipping cost, you're going to get nailed. And let's look at that. So here's a few items I was scanning. Let's just look at this TV, right? Number one, it's restricted, so I couldn't sell that anyways. But let's say I could. As a newbie, I remember going into the stores and I would look at this page, for example, and I would see, okay, I can sell it for $219 minus $36 in fees. I would see about $183 back and I would think, cool, if I can get this for $100, I can make an $80 profit. But in reality, I wasn't looking at the shipping cost. So let's say I can buy this for $100. Seems like a good deal, right? We're going to look at that by tapping on the $183 and I'm going to realize, oh, there's actually $8.82 for my shipping cost. So you can actually come in here with your cost of purchase and put in whatever your buy cost is. And this is the page that's gonna show you your true profit. So that's one example of an $8 shipping cost, which is actually not too much for a TV. Let's pull up another item. And this was a real life item that I was actually scanning. So I found these for $40. Now I see that the buy box price right now is $149.99 minus $52 for my FBA fees, which leaves me with about $97. So let's just for a minute, just exclude the fact that it has a over 1 million rank. Let's say the rank is good and I can see $97 back on my $40 buy cost. It would seem like a no brainer, but 
this is going to be a heavy item and it's not just based on weight it's the whole box dimension how much shelf space this is going to take up so if i tap on that 97 with my gross proceeds ouch i'm going to see i have a 32 dollar shipping cost to amazon plus my cost of purchase of $40. So I would really only see $25 back. So anytime that you're out scanning in the stores, just make sure you are switching to this specific screen so you can see exactly what your numbers are. I remember making a lot of mistakes in the beginning because I was only looking at the gross proceeds and I didn't understand that that did not include my shipping cost. So aside from that, that's a very basic overview on the main things that you need to see within your Amazon Sellers app. The two main things I just want to point out in this video to help you out is make sure you have your shipping cost calculated in there. I recommend anywhere between 50 and 60 cents per pound. And number two, you want to make sure your settings are put as Amazon fulfilled as your channel so your fees are showing FBA fees and not merchant fees. This has been Chaz. I appreciate you guys taking time to check this out. Hopefully it helps somebody. Stay tuned for the next series. I'll see you later.